Well, today is gonna be a hectic, somewhat stressful day, but exciting nonetheless, because today we are bringing in an excavator and knocking down this terrace that I'm currently standing on, which is an old cistern that is no longer functional, would take too much to bring back to life. And we instead are going to be building out a larger usable room. So you can tell that this cistern is not a part of the original building structure. If I understand correctly, the previous owner's father added it maybe 40 years ago. I'm not exactly sure when, uh, but they built it out of the existing stones and then modern day cement. And then they just kind of cemented it right up against the wall of the pre-existing house. So we're going to be taking it down today. Um, hopefully digging out uh, a, an area surrounding it, building a foundation, because then we're going to come back and build a brand new room that's um, a little bit bigger than it, about twice the size. And we're going to build that using the old technique. Uh, we're actually going to build it to match the existing house, and then we'll have an additional room as well as a large terrace to enjoy. All right, so the excavator was delayed a couple of hours, so I actually want to take the opportunity to slowly chip away some of the concrete away from the house because the problem we're facing is that this house is dry stacked. Remember, you can basically reach in. Here's a, a whole bunch of stones that are completely loose that you can pull out. And then you've got this cistern that has been cemented to those dry stack loose stones. So when the excavator comes and he starts aggressively pulling away on the cistern, my thought is, is that he's going to grab a hold of that concrete, which is tied to a loose stone, and just rip it right out, um, causing a lot of repair work to this side of the house, or worse. Um, so now that I have a little bit extra time, I'm going to use this lighter jackhammer to just kind of slowly break it away. I don't think that I'll be able to break it completely away, but at least start to loosen it up and make it an easier process. So Andrea has what I would consider a fairly big and precarious job today, but he arrived and he looked at it and shrugged his shoulders and just got straight to work. He is digging out up against the mountain as far as we can go safely, separating out all of the stones, and then we'll begin knocking down the old cistern. The thing that makes this job a bit tricky to do is just simply the lack of space. As he's separating out the stones from the soil, there's just simply not enough room to work. We also have some old sand left over from making the cement that he's gonna try to save, but in reality, because of the limited space, it's probably all gonna just get mixed together. Now the reason that we are separating out the uh, stones from the soil is very simply that we're going to be building the new room 
out of the stones that we uncover and dig. Later on, he'll break out the jackhammer and start chipping away at the mountain surrounding the area that we have to excavate. And then we will use those stones to build the new room in the same format that they would have built the original house. coming through but at this point we just have to uh, uh, trust in the house's ability to hold itself up. If you remember we started this meeting process before and we called it off because it wasn't safe until we finished the cortulo, the, uh, the cement ring of foundation around this room. Um, but still above that area is dry stacked so there still is some fear associated with this. So what's becoming painfully obvious is the fact that we are simply running out of space. We need to keep the stones close to this new room because we're gonna be using them to build the new room, but there is simply no space left on this terrace. And to be honest, I've been thinking about it. I don't really know what to do right now. So if I'm honest, I think that if it were me behind the controls of the excavator, when I first arrived, I would have gone straight into knocking down that cistern because let's be honest, that sounds the most fun, the most interesting. Um, but as I'm watching him, there's such a strategy involved for where he starts and how he places materials, particularly because we're working with such tight and um, difficult conditions with how narrow these terraces are um, as he's placing the stones and placing the dirt there's literally hardly any room left for his excavator and we are running out of room very very fast so i am very impressed with his technique and approach to making this all work saw this area right here, right there, just flex after the bottom of the there. This, this is a little scary to me, I'm not gonna lie. So I'm glad that I spent that extra time by hand chipping away some of the cement away from the stones because already some of the stones are falling apart or falling off of the wall as that cement grips to it and it's kind of ripped out by the excavator. Um, nothing that isn't easily solved later on, um, but it would have been a lot worse if I had not done that work.
So we're doing some last minute adjustments because um, the mountain simply won't allow us to dig back far enough to uh, build the rooms that the plans called for. Um, so we're going to call the architect, get things redrawn, make the room a little bit more narrow and a little bit longer as a result, which I actually prefer. Now our big question mark of the day is what are we going to find when we dig down deep enough? Are we going to find solid rock that we can use as a foundation to build these new walls or will it transition to um, something more easily erodible and then we will actually have to excavate further to do a concrete foundation and thus adding a lot of money to the budget. <laughs> um, we are crossing our fingers hoping that we can use the mountain as a solid foundation. So one temporary adjustment that we'll have to get used to for the time being is the fact that to come in here and go up to what is our, what is going to be our bedroom, there is no longer stairs outside. So <laughs> we have to use a ladder in order to get up to uh, the second story here, which is what I've been using to climb up here and watch him work, which honestly is quite entertaining and nerve wracking. Um, but I keep forgetting that I'm supposed to be filming. I kind of get mesmerized and locked into watching him work. But there's nothing left here. There used to be a terrace. The reason why I actually really like the idea of changing the room plan and making it uh, not as wide and longer is uh, because it'll actually make our terrace dramatically larger. Because not only will the terrace be a lot wider than originally planned, but we'll still have, I can't show you really, but the, the, you'll still have the depth going back to the mountain. Um, doing a terrible job explaining it, but you'll just have to trust me that it increases the terrace size by, I would guess probably 20% from what we had planned on. Um, so that's a nice little perk that was unexpected. So give me your feedback on this in the comments uh, below because I have not decided what to do. I knew that this wall would end up looking like this and this is basically just cement rendered over top of it. Would you re-render over it with cement or lime or something like that and have a somewhat smooth wall? Or would you go through the painful process of chipping away that cement in order to bring back the texture of the stone? I don't think I would go as far as to make the stone fully visible again, because since this is concrete, the amount of effort required there would be incredibly hard, but we could bring, at least bring back the texture of the stone and then maybe paint it white or would you just make it easy and render over top of it and be done?
Well, it's lunchtime, which is good because I just need a little bit of a break from the chaos and the uh, the noise and to process all of the, the changes. A project like this is very stressful because as you uncover certain things, just with the geology and the, the mountain, but also other realities with space, it changes things dramatically. So we just made a game plan. We called for lunch a little bit early to give him time to go and bring up his large truck because all of this rubble behind me is um, fairly worthless to us. Sorry, I feel bad, I can't share. Italy has the best mandarins. And since it's worthless, and since we have no space to even store the good supplies, he's going to bring his truck up and haul it away to have it reused. Um, but as I talked about last week, anytime you need to haul something away, the cost just goes through the roof. Um, so I'm hoping we make up the difference with what we find with the foundation, um, which is looking promising for about half of the wall. That's about what I was not the wall, the room, about half of the foundation to the room is looking promising to not have to pour a large foundation to mostly rely on the mountain. But we won't officially know until we get basically finished with this digging process. All right, so Andrea is nearly finished scooping up and disposing of all of this rubble. I'm hoping it fits onto one commune, the, the massive truck that he brought. Um, I think it's all of this stone and concrete is gonna be ground up to be used for roads or gravel in the future, I guess. I didn't fully understand what he was saying he plans to do with it, but getting it off site, taking the extra time, the extra money of getting it away now is so much better than kicking the can down the road. Um, I was of the mind of just put it in a corner somewhere and we'll deal with it later just because I didn't want to see that cost added to the bill. But he uh, reasoned with me and explained that you either deal with it now or you deal with it later and it's easier to deal with now. So he's right, just have to take care of it. But once he's finished, then we can get to the root of the problem, which is the foundation. The foundation is what I really want to uncover and see, do we have to pour the entire foundation out of concrete or can we keep some of the mountain as the foundation? of all of this rubble you'll occasionally find um, a handful of really small round rocks like this which is very out of place and they're fossils. I tried to break this one open to take a look at it and can't really get a good look at what it would have been. Um, I'm gonna keep my eye out and find something good. So 
So you can see just how fast he's able to turn the mountain into usable building stones, which gives me two thoughts. One, if they could see what we're doing now, 700 years ago when they started building this house, when they were breaking that stone by hand, I must have taken months to do what he's done in the last couple of hours. And then my second thought is, is what are we gonna do with all the stone? See, the original plan was to use the stone to build the wall in front of the house. Um, but as we discussed last week, we're no longer able to do that or no longer makes sense to do that. So now we have all of this usable stone, which is why we're gonna use the stone to build this room, but there's gonna be so much left over. I need some ideas. Give me some ideas. So I just finished talking to Andrea and we're not gonna be able to finish today, which means that we're out of time to include the finish in this week's video. I had hoped to show you guys the entire process from start to finish in one video, but timing doesn't always work out the way you uh, expect it to. So next week, if you'll bear with me, we will finish up on this and then start building the rooms quite quickly after that. So if you're interested to see how local builders take all of these stones, shape them, and then build a brand new room out of them, I hope that you'll stick around, join us next week, subscribe if you haven't, give us a like if you wouldn't mind, and we will see you next week.